I'm in the Toby Dynavox booth with Ellen Witham, and she's going to show us some assistive technology for people with audio, people who don't speak well. Is that the right way of saying it? That's a good start. Toby Dynavox is the world's leader in communication devices for people with speech and language impairments. And so we have a variety of solutions ranging from apps on iPads all the way through to fully functional communication devices that can be controlled with your eyes for expressive communication as well as for computer access and um, controlling your environment through X10 and infrared controls so that you can use it to turn the TV on, on and off control an infrared fan, communicate, use Facebook, email. So I think the hard part for Ellen is going to be to narrow us down to just a couple things to show because they do everything from children to adults, from uh, not having a voice to not being able to move your arms, everything. So uh, you've got an iPad up here. What is this application called? This application is the core first user in our Compass software. It's designed specifically for language learners and this software application moves in conjunction with a set of printed materials that we have that reinforces the first 12 words of a core word strategy so that individuals who are just learning language have multiple ways of reinforcing the use and combination of those words. Now these are, these are people who don't speak. That's right. And, so, and with this, this is going to speak for them, correct? Right. So typically this user profile would be used for a young child who was perhaps just beginning to say, want more. And so I'm not sure you heard that, but she tapped a, a picture that showed hands and it said want, and then more, it was a bigger pile of something than a smaller pile, and she tapped that, and then she tapped a button that and spoke. And then the speak button, and were we not in a really loud environment, you'd hear the iPad speaking, saying, want more. So this serves as someone's voice, whether it's on an iPad or perhaps if it's on a dedicated communication device that happily has much more robust speakers. So, so I'm going to describe this. She's got something that looks like an iPad, but it's a giant titanium alloy ruggedized device. But you said that it's got speakers that point towards the other person. So when you hold it, you're speaking. That's right. Here's an example. Go, go, go. There, we wrote go, go, go by, together earlier by pressing the buttons of the picture of go. Let's try like more. Like more. You can see that's slightly better than what the iPad was doing. Right. And so this is what's called a dedicated device. It's covered by insurance. It's also covered by state's Medicaid. And um, it's a very ruggedized um, approach with Gorilla Glass, with a titanium alloy case, with a very robust two-year sort of no-fault warranty. All of our dedicated devices um, fit those qualifications and are covered by insurance and Medicare. Now, we also have communication devices that one can simply control with their eyes. On this device we have a really simple cause effect game and I'll show you that by just looking at the device I make the butterflies move. All right, here she goes. She's looking at, she just hit a star. She's looking up and around and bubbles are moving on screen. So I'm making that happen because of where I'm looking. In a and moment. That's teaching you where to, to look to do things. This is our most emergent approach for eye control that teaches a user, for example, a very young child, that simply by looking at the screen that they're creating that cause effect. Because when we think about people who have been fully locked in, particularly for years and years, they they have to learn those underlying skills that even by looking at the screen that they're actually doing something because for their entire life they've been nothing but receivers of information and now they can actually create it. I, I gotta tell you Alan, I'm actually getting chills as you describe that. No, that is, that's amazing. <laughs> so there are a number of different other um, activities in this this learning curve, we started out in sensory, and then we can move all the way up to, for example, making choices 
where now this is more complex. I've got a car. I've got three options. I can give him donuts for wheels. And oh, wow. She just unhappy. looked at the donuts and the wheels on the, uh, on the car are donuts, and it's kind of spreading some jelly on screen. So that was the wrong choice? <laughs> right. Or as a kid would do it, that's the right choice. That's the right choice. I want donut wheels. Or if we look at proper wheels for him. See, now look how happy he is. So these simple choice making that, remember, these are still pre-verbal activities, um, can be used to help identify a target, dwell on a target. Was that how you selected? Was you just dwelled on I it? I just looked at it, right. But I had to stay there for about one second to demonstrate that I was being volitional and not just fleeting my glance across as I was earlier with the butterflies. Wow, now this this is a uh, looks to be a Windows tablet, right? So this is a fully functional Windows 10 computer and the communication software sits on top of that. We also have a 12 inch device that might be more appropriate for someone who needed larger cell sizes or had a vision impairment. And these are the kinds of eye control communication devices that are acquired very frequently by individuals with ALS because they can use a full keyboard, they can access Skype, Facebook, infrared controls, controlling their television, and really have full access to daily communication. So I assume in Windows 10 it's using the t it would be in more tablet interface, right? Well, it's a it's a Windows platform right. underneath. Right. But, but the tablet interface allows you to have the bigger targets that you would need with your eyes than you would with a tiny little mouse, for example. Oh, well, well maybe your software overlay takes care of that. Right, yes, our, our proprietary software takes care of that. All right, well, this has been really cool, Ellen. This is a lot of great information, and uh, so we're, we're trying not to be too specific because you cover so many things, but if people wanted to learn more about uh, Toby Dynavox, where would they go? They could go to www.tobydynavox.com. And that's T-O-B-I-I, -I, I'm reading your shirt, <laughs> T-O-B-I-I, -I, Dynavox. Thank you very much. Thank you.